بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد All praise is due to Allah the one who sent his messenger with the guidance and the religion of truth in order to make it uppermost over all religions and sufficient is Allah as a witness I testify openly that no one deserves any worship other than Allah alone, without any partners. I emphasize this and hold to it true Islamic monotheism. I further testify that Muhammad was his worshipful servant and messenger. May Allah raise his rank and that of his family and companions, and may he grant them all an abundance of safety. Let's begin with our today's um, read up, quick reading of Al Aqidatul Wasitiya. So we'll continue from where we left off. Waqawluhu wujuhu yawma idhin nadira ila rabbiha nadira. القيامة آية 22 إلى 23 And his statement faces on that day are gleaming with joy unto the Lord looking Chapter 75 verse 22 to 23 وقوله وقوله على الرائك ينظر المطففين ثلاثة وعشرين أو عشرون and his statement upon raised couches looking 83-23 وقوله للذين أحسن الحسن وزيادة يونس ستة وعشرون and his statement for those who work righteous deeds proficiently is الحسن the fine reward of paradise and something additional ten twenty six وقوله لهم ما يشاءون فيها ولدينا مزيد قاف خمسة وثلاثون and his statement they have they have all they want therein, and we still have something more for them. <sighs> Chapter 50, verse 35. SubhanAllah. وَهَذَا الْبَابُ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ كَثِيرٌ مَنْ تَدَبَّرَ الْقُرْآنَ طَالِبًا لِلْهُدَى مِنْهُ تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ طَرِيقُ الْحَقِّ which means this topic that is divine attributes is found in the book of Allah much whoever contemplates whoever contemplates the Quran seeking guidance from it shall have the way of truth made clear to him ثم في سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فالسنة تفسر القرآن وتبينه 
وَتَدُلُّ عَلَيْهِ وَتُعَبِّرُ عَنْهِ وَمَا وَصَفَ الرَّسُولُ بِهِ رَبَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ مِنَ الْأَحَادِيثِ السِّحَاحِ الَّتِي تَلَقَّهَا أَهْلُ الْمَعْرِفَةِ بِالْقَبُولِ وَجَبَ الْإِيمَانُ بِهَا كَذَلِكَ Additionally, there is much on this topic in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. May Allah raise the rank and grant him peace. The Sunnah explains the Quran, clarifies it, guides to it, and elaborates on it. However, the Messenger described his mighty and majestic Lord as found in authentic narrations with the people of scholarly understanding, have confirmed and accepted all of that must likewise be believed in. فَمِنْ ذَلِكْ مِثْلُ قَوْلِهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم يَنْزِلُ رَبُّنَا إِلَى السَّمَاءِ الدُّنْيَا كُلَّ لَيْلَةٍ حِينَ يَبْقَى ثُلُثُ اللَّيْلِ الْآخِرِ ويقول من يدعوني فأستجيب له من يسألني فعوتيه من يستغفرني فأغفر له متفق عليه An example of this would be his statement May Allah raise his rank and grant him peace Our Lord descends to the lowest heaven every night when only the last third of the night remains and he says who is calling upon me so that I would answer him? Who is requesting something of me so that I would give it to him? Who is seeking my forgiveness so that I would forgive him? Agreed upon. وَقَوْلُهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ اللَّهُ أَشَدُّ فَرْحًا بتوبة العبد المؤمن من أحدكم براحلته الحديث and his statement may Allah raise his rank and grant him peace verily Allah is happier with the repentance of his believing servant than one of you would be with his riding beast to the end of that hadith وقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يضحك الله إلى رجلين يقتل أحدهما الآخر كلاهما يدخل الجنة متفق عليه and his statement may Allah raise his rank grant him peace Allah laughs in approval at two men. One kills the other, yet they both go to paradise. Agreed upon. Subhanallah. وَقَوْلُهُ عَجِبَ رَبُّنَا مِنْ قُنُوطِ عِبَادِهِ وَقُرْبِ غِيَّرِهِ يَنْظُرُ إِلَيْكُمْ أَزِلِينَ قَنِتِينَ فَيَظَلُّ يَضْحَكْ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّ فَرَجَكُمْ قَرِيبٌ حَدِيثٌ حَسَنٌ And his statement of the Lord is amazed at the despair of his slaves. When change is so close, he looks upon them waiting in despair and he continues to laugh knowing that their relief is near. It is sound, it is a sound narration. وقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يزال جهنم يلقى فيها وهي تقول هل من مزيد حتى يضع رب العزة فيها رجله وفي رواية عليها قدمه فينزوي بعدها إلى بعد فتقول قط قط Muttafaqun alayhi. 
and his statement, May Allah raise his rank and grant him peace, people will continue to be tossed into Jahannam as it says, Are there any more? This continues until the Lord of Honor puts his rigil upon it. In one version, his qadam, both rigil and qadam means foot. And so it collapses it upon itself, saying, Enough! Enough! Agreed upon. SubhanAllah. وَقَوْلُهُمْ يَقُولُ تَعَالَى يَا آدَمُ فَيَقُولُ لَبَّيْكَ وَسَعْدَيْكَ فَيُنَادِي بِصَوْتُ فَيُنَادِي بِالصَّوْتِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكَ أَنْ تُخْرِجَ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِكَ بَعْثًا إِلَى النَّارِ مُتَّفَقٌ عَلَيْهِ And his statement, Allah the Most High says, O Adam, O Adam, so he replies, Here I am, ready to respond. Then he calls out to him with a voice, Verily Allah orders you to take a group of your descendants to the fire. Agreed upon. وَقَوْلُهُ مَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا سَيُكَلِّمُهُ رَبُّهُ وَلَيْسَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهُ تَرْجُمَان And his statement there is not one of you except that his Lord shall speak to him without any interpreter between them. Allah Musta'an. So, brothers, the most important point in today's lesson, in summary, is that we understand the Quran as per the understanding of the Sunnah and of course as per the understanding of the Sahaba we do not go for our own biased 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 understanding our own twisted interpretations our own understandings okay that is where people deviate the real knowledge is knowing the Quran from the Sunnah as per the Sahaba from the scholars the senior scholars that is this is and preferably in Lugha al Arabiya Tayyib so this is the right way to understand religion to seek religion and to understand religion alright and whatever ways people are trying to innovate or uh, trash through these days then you can already clearly any sane person can see the deviations like that guy may Allah guide him Muhammad Hijab he says that you know he's all over the place uh, on YouTube I don't advise you to follow him but I'm just mentioning him in case you come across his video because he talks about Andrew Tate a lot so you know he says that what is this Aqeedah and what is this uh, you know books of Sheikh uh, Sheikh Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab you know and he speaks badly of the scholars may Allah guide him may Allah guide him he's a miskeen a jahil you know so the important thing is if you know anything about Saudi Arabia subhanallah I am born there coming from a person who is born there and who has sat with the scholars in the majalis of the Ahlul Ilm for, for years for a couple of years I can tell you that subhanallah I could feel I even lived in Wadi Hanifa where that Sheikh used to live actually Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul I can tell you subhanallah I mean he belongs from there that place has a strange Saudi Arabia has a strange peace you know a level of peace that I have not felt in Malaysia that I have not felt in Pakistan 
it's really strange and it's difficult to describe in words and subhanallah what is so special about Saudi Arabia is just a desert in reality it's just a desert but it's a land of the prophets you know Islam began from there the Sahaba used to walk over there live over there that's what make Mecca and Medina special right otherwise it's just desert and mountains and sand and date palm trees that's all which is there but subhanallah the what you find over there especially with the scholars of truth of knowledge I have traveled a bit around the world and I haven't experienced that wallahi and the most important point till date in Saudi Arabia in the schools they teach the kids the books of Sheikh Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab from grade 1 Aqeedah is taught to them what is Aqeedah? the three questions that you will be asked in the grave Man Rabbuka Man Nabiyuka Ma Deenuka the three questions that you will be asked in the grave that is Usul Salasa that's what they teach in grade 1 tell me what is wrong with that what is wrong with that teaching that the parents are supposed to teach their kids anyways that's the fundamentals that's the basics if they are not teaching that that they are, then they are really dumb you know with all due respect so so this is like I mean that is uh, sheer stupidity if, if parents are thinking that they are just kids and they don't need to learn about Allah and, and his messenger and Sahaba and prophets at, at uh, age of at, at grade one if they don't teach them then I don't know when they are going to teach them because they are definitely not going to listen after 10 years old 15 years old the, so the point is that uh, if you read these books there is just like this this is like this book is written by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah a legend of Islam may Allah have mercy on him what do you find in this book what, what have I have read right now it's just verses from Allah right verses from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but they are written in a specific manner to explain the right aqeedah of al sunnah wal jama'ah as we will read on we will see you know we have hardly uh, covered half of the book right now so what I can tell you is definitely you should go and listen to the full uh, audio this is not the full audio go to go and listen to the full audio on 1mm that is uh, by Abu Abbas Musa Richardson. You can go to the speaker.com and you'll find his whole thing. The link is there on this Facebook page of mine. You can and on my Twitter you can find the links. Don't worry about the links. So the point is if you're sincere, if you want the truth, you will find it, right? So for any person to not knowing never lived in Saudi Arabia, never sat with the scholars, don't know he knows or he doesn't know Arabic language even if he knows a bit of Arabic language that doesn't uh, he couldn't even recite the Quran properly and Shams Shamsi corrected him you know that's in the speaker corner you can look at that so there is a lot of fitna going on right now people have never studied Islam with the scholars over a number of years and they are just uh, every other person just because you can uh, go live every other person has started speaking about Islam without knowledge you know they don't pray five times they don't have beards they have no idea about the ins and outs of Islam and they are just talking about it and in process what they are doing is they are misguiding themselves and others just for the sake of likes and subscribes and uh, to get popular and whatnot you know I don't care if anyone watches my video I don't even care uh, if they watch while I'm alive you know even if they my main concern is they watch after I have passed away that's my main concern that's the whole point of making this right and I have clear I'm not gonna run any ads I don't expect any monetization from this I just hope that Allah monetizes my akhirah <laughs> you know and I get some reward for it on the day of judgment 
Wallahi, it's a very heavy day coming upon us, the day of judgment. Most of the people have no clue. The the Akhir Juz, which people just read uh, like a poem these days, the Muslims, may, uh, may Allah guide us all. Uh, yani so easily they recite these ayahs. Wallahi, the Messenger of Allah Islam used to say, that Surah Al-Qiyamah and their likes have made his hairs white out of the fear, the sheer fear of the Yawm Al-Qiyamah. That is the Messenger of Allah I mean he just had few uh, white hairs, maximum of 20 or something as comes in the Hadith in uh, Shamayl Muhammadiyah. But the point is that he had very few white hairs even at 60, 63 years of age. But the point is that you know, imagine someone's hair is turning gray or white out of fear of, of Jahannam, of uh, Qiyamah, I mean, Yom al Qiyamah, the Day of Judgment. So we believe in the Day of Judgment. Day of Judgment is part of our faith. There are six articles of faith to believe in Allah, His angels, His books, His messengers, the Day of Judgment, and Divine Preordainment, right? Allah, His angels, His books, His messengers, the Day of Judgment, and Divine Preordainment, Al Qada Al Qadr. So now most of us are weak in in the area of believing in decree or destiny. Most of the Muslims are. Why I'm saying that? You will hear things like, "Oh, why?" Why it always happens with me? Why it happened? Why it had to happen now? What next? Why me? Why now? And these kind of things you will see people sighing, you know. So this is actually haram. This is kufr. These kind of statements. You shouldn't be saying it if you really believe in the destiny. Whatever happens with you, good and bad, is already written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's part of our destiny. It's a part of Allah's decree. You cannot change it, you cannot question it. The only thing you can do is you can accept it, you can believe in it, and you can be patient. Of course, if it's good, then you thank Allah, you are grateful, and you do shukr, and if it's hard and difficult, then you do sabr, right? If it's a punishment or it's a trial, then still you will be raised by levels. If you are patient, you will be rewarded. You know, perhaps Allah is... Uh, Allah is bringing your punishment on the day of judgment in this world which is a great discount which is a great relief Wallahi you don't want to see any punishment whatsoever on the day of judgment or in, in the hellfire you know so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all so the point is, brothers and sisters, extremely important to learn your fundamentals of Islam, to learn aqeedah, the creed, the basic creed, the basic belief system about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about the Messenger of Allah salam. You have to have strong connection with Allah. Without Allah, we, we can't survive in this world by our own, on our own. We can't. We can't do anything. But you will see most people when they hit a mishap, they face a problem, then only they remember Allah. Otherwise, they are just too so-called busy to remember Allah, you know. So we really have to fear Allah. Make sure you are doing your five times salah properly. That just gets you in Islam. That doesn't make you a great Muslim, right? You have to pray five times, uh, protect. As Sheikh Muhammad bin Ghalib, uh, Hafizullah says that, protect your faraid awwalan protect your aqeedah then protect your faraid faraid includes everything obedience to allah five time prayers all the five pillars of islam then obedience to your parents you know and after your faraid like for a man look, uh, earning halal feeding his wife and kids and looking after his parents and all that and uh, the, the other other way for the woman, you know, for the woman to be obedient to their husbands, to their parents, and being patient in the homes and uh, uh, be, uh, fighting their soul, their nafs, both of them, and you know, striving hard to follow the Quran and Sunnah as per the Sahaba. 
day in and day out doing hijab properly not making any excuses not excluding yourself from anything haram you know what is haram is haram it's for everyone no one can get a discount no one can say that i'm not gonna do this you know imagine the sahaba after the death of uh, rasulullah some uh, murtad some people uh, apostated some people left islam some people how why they said we are not going to give zakah rest all is fine we are not going to give zakah so then abu bakr as siddiq radiyallahu an he fought he did qital he fought with these people he said by allah i will fight with you until you pay zakah and abu bakr radiyallahu an became soft and he was like why uh, how can you kill people who say la ilaha illallah he said because this is the understanding of the the islam of sunnah you know like subhanallah this is what the messenger of islam left with he left with five pillars of islam so how come after he has left this world you say you know what i'm just gonna care about four pillars of islam forget about uh, zakah if you are earning well obviously zakah is only obligatory on you when you reach the nisab when when you uh, you know you're fulfilling the requirements not when you are poor right if you are poor you are a faqir or a miskin then you are actually eligible for zakah you know so obviously there are like eight kinds of categories eight people that actually are eligible for zakah but again that's not the uh, subject here right now the point is that there are so many things now take for example this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming to the lowest heaven every single day subhanallah most of the muslims they think Allah is just coming Allah is just descending down in Ramadan at least that's what you feel from the behavior of the muslims subhanallah they only do tarawi and all of the muslims you know very well they don't even do tarawi the whole of Ramadan it's just the beginning and the end it's not the whole of Ramadan so subhanallah there is it it is like as though it's a fashion or it's a burden there you cannot feel the love people don't really love allah you know subhanallah if you really loved allah you really believed in him you believed in all these six articles that i've mentioned of faith they would stand in prayer every single night if they really loved allah wallahi you would stand in prayer every single night less or more you know that doesn't matter that's up to your taqwa but subhanallah you're just standing there in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every single night because he is saying i'm there i'm there and you know who is calling upon me so that i would answer him who is requesting something of me so that i would give it to him who is seeking my forgiveness so that i would forgive him imagine yani subhanallah don't we always want something we are hungry it's food clothing shelter it's jobs these days people are jobless uh, or if they are doing business they want more clients they want more business you name it like uh, the singles want to get married the married want to get uh, the men who always want a second wife they want to become polygamous polygynous and then the the wives always want more of uh, you know time more of care more of love more of uh, attention more of gifts more more of you know respect more of freedom you know and it's never enough however much a husband does but she always wants more and same thing goes with the husband however much love and respect she shows in the end he wants more of it and he uh, he wants more of them you know subhanallah that's just the nature of any man so the point is the kids want more of fun the kids want to play around all the time they don't want these hefty uh, you know burdensome overloading studies and you know being forced to study all the time and they just want to have fun and play all the time please get your kids off the screens take them to the park let them play 
more importantly take them to the masajid i see this subhanallah sisters all the time online you know i need a qari or qariya for my kid can you come to my house everywhere whether it's pakistan or saudi arabia global thing it's a global phenomena even here in uae i've seen this what is this it's wallah it's it's nonsense what is this i mean like why don't people just follow the sahaba live like how the sahaba used to live why can't you just send your kids to the masjid to study with a proper qari uh, an alim a mufassir or a, a proper qari or an uh, like a quran academy the masajid have here for example riyadh salihin is an academy here in uh, for those of you who don't know in dubai there is riyadh salihin and they have a proper tahfeez uh, system for both for girls and boys full hijab everything separate it's like near to perfect you know and i don't think they charge money and uh, i'm not sure though but i think so they don't charge money regardless like I don't charge money I can teach Quran to kids I love it and I don't charge money the point is but the these mothers these parents no they won't send them to masajid they are taking them to amusement parks to cinema to theater to malls to these play areas and uh, you know you should respect a teacher it's not good to hire a teacher bring a te- teacher home for home tuitions that's not deserving of a teacher people go towards the ulama like a crow goes to a a well to drink water the well doesn't fly and go to a crow right same way it's a well known saying uh, by the people of knowledge so the people who want to seek knowledge are supposed to travel to the scholars of islam who are well known who are ma'roof who are in the masajid you know allocated everywhere in the world so you find the right masjid the right alim and and you go and directly learn from him you learn quran from him you know you learn sunnah from him you don't just learn uh, about fancy stuff I mean like it's become like a fashion memorizing Quran is a, is a fashion is a fancy stuff oh, you know my kid is a hafiz my my girl is a hafiz that's what should i say may allah guide them that's nonsense what is this titles you know a hafiz in the just for your information a hafiz in the time of sahaba used to be a person who had not only had memorized Quran Abdullah bin Umar radiyallahu anhu he he memorized surah al-baqarah in 8 years imagine he memorized quran specifically just a surah surah al-baqarah in 8 years imagine he is the son of Umar bin Khattab radiyallahu anhu why it took him 8 years he could have completed in 3 days ask yourself this question he took 8 years because their understanding was do not memorize 10 verses except that you act upon it do not memorize 10 verses except that you act upon it so you memorize 10 verses you hold yourself and you make sure that you have acted upon that verses those 10 verses the parents should act upon this sunnah like this like they should learn learn quran like this with the ulama and they should teach their kids quran like this not like khash it's a crash course 6 months 1 year 2 year my kids are half is got it off our shoulders subhanallah what is this attitude and after doing this you think you deserve a crown on yawm al qiyama you know what i'm saying so the niya is extremely important again and again the ulama say sheikh fozan says sheikh uh, you know ibn baz says sheikh um, um, albani sheikh muhammad uh, bin sali al usaimi Uh, Shaykh uh, Muhammad bin Ghalib Hafizullah he says that students of knowledge check your niya are you really seeking knowledge for your own nafs to remove jahl from your nafs are you really seeking knowledge for the sake of Allah 
or you're seeking it just for this dunya or to become famous or just to brag to people or to you know show off or whatever is it all these lowly reasons or you're really seeking knowledge to become a better muslim a practicing muslim a better muslim every single day of ours is a chance from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to improve right tell me something ask this question to yourself is today friday better than your yesterday thursday ask yourself this question another question is this friday of ours better than our previous friday like for example last friday we just read surah al kahf this friday we read the translation of tafsir bin kaseer or the tafsir al saadi or tafsir al tabari of at least half of surah al kahf if not the full you know did you challenge yourself like that did you grow let's say from the duas of uh, anxiety stress depression that i just shared today is it like you didn't know the duas yes uh, before last friday and today you have memorized those duas i have just shared on my facebook page the duas it's a extremely first of all it's an extremely important dars you must hear it you probably you probably are stressed depressed okay and you know or you don't know but you probably are less or more every other person is every other person i meet and i'm sure you would agree they will tell you two things first thing they don't have time and second thing they would tell you is that they're too stressed to do anything subhanallah well how about you learn these duas these authentic duas three of them are extremely important and they are mentioned in the dars by our beloved brother abu ismail mustafa george hafizahullah what an excellent dars wallahi it was such a relief heart relieving heart comforting dars you know do listen to that all of it so you have to decide first you have to decide you have to set in your mind that i need this i want this i want to change i want to become a better muslim so from now onwards i'm going to set aside time for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i'm going to make him a priority in my life he is my priority i love him the most you know i fear him the most i hope from him the most tell me who do you hope jannah from only allah can give you your parents your husband your wives your kids no one else can give you your uh, alim no one only allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the deity who can give you jannah and you have to earn it right you have to work for it you have to earn it you do not get it by default because being a muslim is not by default it's not that because you're born a muslim so you remain a muslim you'll die a muslim no hundreds of examples i can give you thousands of examples people born muslim but they died as kafir wallahu billah and even those who are who were muslims they were they didn't have the tawfiq to say the kalima before they died you know what i'm saying like there's a story i remember in the time of sahaba there was one person his his mother was not pleased with him so he was not able to say the kalima so then someone went by and told him that please forgive your son because he's not able to say the kalima and so she did and then he was able to say and then he passed away so the point is that this is a sahi narration and this event took place within the time of sahaba so you know there are so many narrations you have to read you have to read quran you have to read sunnah with understanding i am saying not to brag to people not to show off to people please for the sake of allah when you recite quran when you revise quran when you go for umrah don't tell to anyone hide your good deeds hide your good deeds you're doing it for allah don't tell anyone right but it shouldn't be the case that you are a mother and you have kids you are aunt you are whatever i mean you are a woman and you have kids in your house and 
they always see a mobile in your hand they never see quran in your hand they never see you praying on time they never see you listening to others watching others right all the time you're busy in searching for clients or selling stuff online or looking at other people dunya dunya you know subhanallah where is your akhirah where is your struggle for akhirah so we have to prioritize allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to prioritize our akhirah it is not something that's going to happen by default you have to take special measures so you have to set aside time for seeking knowledge you have to set aside a time to act upon knowledge you have to set aside time to check yourself how are you doing you have to go to ulama and ask them how are you doing check your knowledge test your knowledge you have to ask yourself by yourself you know you have to check yourself how how well you are doing how fast you are improving how well you are improving it shouldn't be the case years upon years have passed by but you haven't memorized the quran you uh, haven't understood the quran you haven't learned you haven't read most of the muslims today subhanallah 2 billion plus muslims today most of them ajeeb wallahi ajeeb they haven't read the translation of the quran cover to cover you don't even know what their rub is saying imagine let me give you an example let's say you are a husband or your wife or you are a brother or your sister or you are just friends men male friends or female friends because there is no boyfriend and girlfriend right in islam so ask this question what if your husband doesn't reply you say something you send 10 messages on whatsapp for example masalan and he doesn't reply to your messages days pass by he doesn't reply your husband doesn't reply your wife doesn't reply your you know subhanallah your friends don't reply your siblings don't reply they don't reply they don't care about you you are not a priority in their life how does it feel how do you feel you feel angry you feel left out you feel ignored right subhanallah i mean like let me tell you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need his creation in fact i read in the sunnah uh, the messenger of allah sallam said that allah allah even says in the quran that do not think that i need you like if people believe still allah taala allah subhanahu wa taala is going to bring in more people in this world and allah will choose allah will allow allah will de- allah will allow that some of them will do kufr some of them will shirk like allah has given them free will you know that is obviously from the uh, the from the uh, uh, mashia of allah subhanahu wa taala from the degree of allah that some people will be guided and most of them will be misguided allah will allow that right otherwise how can you imagine that the test of this life is fair right that has to be done that makes perfect logic about degree what many people don't understand about life so you know the important thing is for you to remember that imagine and allah says that i will if people stop sinning then i will make a creation who will sin and then they will seek forgiveness and i will forgive them imagine if all the people together stop sinning everyone becomes so righteous then what allah will do allah will allah will create a qaum who will sin and then they will seek forgiveness and allah will forgive them imagine that like allah does not need you allah does not need your ibadah they are gazillions trillions of angels worshiping allah by every second of our time subhanallah you know so angels are already doing it without sleeping without drinking without getting tired subhanallah and that's a special makhluq of allah subhanahu wa taala special creation and and then insan is at another level they are imagine there is azan going on all the time 
around the world i am saying at one single time around the world somewhere some place the azan is ongoing the the prayer people are praying you know someone is making dua someone is uh, praying whether it's wajiba or nafila like whether it's fard faraid or it's nafil salah or they are playing the sunan either way sunan or rawatib either way subhanallah humans just humans alone the 8 billion around the world 8 billion plus most of them or you can say at you know 2 to 3 billion of them only allah knows how many muslims actually exist in this world as per statistics is 2 billion plus but you know only allah knows i i ex- i think there would be like 3 billion muslims around the world like islam is the fastest growing religion in the world it's just that they are hidden they are not known they are in the hiding so because they, there comes in the sunna that even near the end of time there will not be left any place where islam will not reach islam will reach everywhere and now allah has allowed this this media this digital uh, world you know so everyone knows everything pretty much right people don't know the languages but they understand that someone is reciting the quran someone is praying you know so imagine there are creations that are already busy worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether you do it or not allah is in not in need of you he is a samad he is a samad the self sufficient he does not need us he does not need his creation so we are the weak ones he is the perfect ones we are the weak we need strength from allah we need physical strength uh, first of all spiritual strength our ruh is the real existence of us you know i mean obviously our body is real but it's it's temporary it's going to die out pass out going to be eaten by worms sooner or later be ready for that are you ready for that so allah mustaan that time is coming it's coming really fast time is the vessel of system prophesies near the day of judgment people will be building tall buildings guess what saudi arabia is building now the tallest tower in the world 2 km tall tower and the arabia arab lands will become green it's happening right in front of our eyes women wearing clothes but naked transparent clothes you name it full tabarruj uh, am it's yani adi it's is there allah musta'an may allah protect preserve us and i mean like i think most of the signs are there right there most of the signs are there even many people don't know the cars is, cars are were prophesized the internet was prophesized so what is the mobile phones was prophesized what is left now is like you know the the major ilamat asaa uh, you know the the sun rising from the west the uh, that beast coming out the the zuhur of isa and and uh, uh, mahdi ma mahdi like the major major signs are left and rest almost everything is in, in front of you allah musta'an like every single even on youtube on social media i see this people saying people looking at what's going on in saudi arabia and rest of the world and they are like khalas the qiyamah is near everyone knows it the end of time is near then the question is why we are not fearing allah as he deserves to be feared why we are not changing why we are looking at others wala wala kin la aksar nas la ya'lamun allah says in the quran most of the people are going to go to jahannam anyways most of the people are misguided why we are following the majority look for example in pakistan they have democracy so called democracy what they got out of it in 70 years 75 years whatever you know they didn't follow sharia look humiliated today messed up allahu musta'an the people who are kafir like japan germany doing better than them you know 
So this is what happens when you leave the Sharia of Allah, you put Quran and Sunnah on your back, then you will be humiliated. Anything you you leave Islam, you don't search Izza in Islam, you search Izza in material life and nationality and and uh, all this rubbish. You you will be humiliated. Rest assured. That's the famous call of uh, Umar bin Khattab So we need to learn. Allah gave Izza to Islam and to Sahaba because because of Islam, and we need to seek that Izza. Today we need it more than ever. We need to return. Keep in mind, Khilafah is going to come back. Islam is going to return under the you know uh, leadership of uh, Imam Mahdi and Isa alayhi salam. That's gonna happen, and you can already see signs and and the fitna of Sham and you know, Yemen. You know, it's already there. So, my advice to you all, brothers and sisters of Islam, Wallahi, I don't know how far I live. I don't know which video of mine is my last, which day of mine is my last. So if maybe, Allahu Alam, if this video is my last, I say to you, brothers and sisters in Islam, that Tawheed is the solution. Forget about everything else. لا إله إلا الله لا معبود بحق إلا الله There is no deity worthy of worship in truth except Allah سبحانه وتعالى And Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is his final messenger and slave Tawheed Return back to Tawheed In it is salvation In it is success Forget about everything else No democracy, no votes, no nothing You know, no sword no guns, no bombs, no technology, like nothing else is gonna work out. It is just Tawheed. That is the key. That's what matters to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, forget about what, what matters to people. See what matters to Allah. Because He is the master of the day of judgment. He has in control everything. Your breath, your eyesight, which you are here looking at right now, the, your here. You're hearing your ears that you're listening with right now. al-Basir. In fact, he is listening to us and he's looking at us right now. Subhanahu ta'ala. So have that consciousness, high-level consciousness of Allah subhanahu ta'ala. You are a slave. We are but a slave of Allah subhanahu ta'ala. That, that is the purpose of our life. That's why we were sent here. We were not sent here to be influencers and digital creators and businessmen and data scientists and what not you know whatever people are planning to be these days I'm not saying that those things are useless or, or or don't do them no they have their own importance and place and in fact Muslims are weak even in that domain you know and they need to strive hard and become strong in these domains but is that is that the hook is that the you know, as they say, the key which will give us victory, which will help us get back Palestine and all other Muslim countries, you know, which will actually unite all the Muslim countries. What is that? That is Tawheed. You do not seek leadership. You fear Allah. If, if people say that you are a good leader, become our leader, all of the people run after you and you are given leadership, then Allah will help you. But do not seek our leadership. It's haram, you know. And stop criticizing the leaders, please, for the sake of Allah. All the Muslim leaders around the world, respect them, make dua for them. If you really care, if you really want change, make dua every single night in the last third of the night. See, Then see what happens. Just witness this in your life. Do it for a number of years. Just keep making dua and wallahi you will be amazed with the results. You will be amazed. So make dua at night. Oh Allah, strengthen the heart of our Muslim leaders. Guide them. Because imagine Imam Ahmad, Rahmatullah Ali, he said, Imam Ahlul Sunnah, that if I knew that there would be one dua of mine which would be accepted, then I would save it for the Muslim ruler. Imagine that. 
like look at the depth of tawakkul and and the intensity of khair which our salaf used to have we are no way near them why because we don't read about them we don't care about them we don't even know that they existed right subhanallah you don't have to follow any specific imam you don't have to be a you know uh, hanafi or shafi or maliki or hanbali you don't have to be i'm not a hanbali you don't get stuck look one extreme is you just leaving islam altogether not practicing at all and uh, not believing in allah becoming an atheist that's way far way extreme or you believe in allah but you don't believe in i hear a lot of muslims especially from pakistan i hear this all the time that you know ah, yes we are a muslim but we are not that much of a muslim <laughs> what is that supposed to mean subhanallah you know there is no less or more muslim you are either a believer or you are disbeliever or you are munafiq there are only three three categories three distinction in the quran there is no fourth right so you have to see where you stand are you a believer are you a true believer if not what's stopping you become a strong believer for allah loves a strong believer more than a weak believer as is mentioned in the hadith in bukhari muslim so get to those one strong piece of advice i would give you find the true scholars go and stick with them wallahi because they are super strong they are solid if there was any superhero whatever people think of spider-man superman batman whatever you know wallahi if there was any superhero then they are the scholars believe it or not because why i say this because in the midst of all this fitna you know all this haram all this fitna all these trials and tribulations they are sticking strong to the sunnah to the rope of allah the quran and the sunnah of the messenger of allah so that is superhuman power really and where is it coming from it's coming from allah it's coming from their faith it's coming because of their faith right it's not because you know like here for example what i observed in last nine ten months uh, in dubai and and from sheikh muhammad bin ghalib al umari hafizullah now he is a yemeni sheikh he is not emirati he is not pakistani he is not indian he is yemeni and he is coming from saudi arabia and was well, subhanallah he is blessed imagine they are others uh, doesn't emirat have uh, people of knowledge they have they are even there they teach but subhanallah the way he teaches the amount of knowledge he has like may allah bless him may allah bless him i'm really amazed subhanallah how allah guides some people more how he strengthens them more you know how he blesses them more with knowledge and its application the amazing part is the application not just having knowledge but having its application how to speak when to speak how much to speak and not getting involved in things that are not concerned with him everything like all parts of the sunnah like subhanallah you know when you sit with the people of knowledge across the world so then you can compare then you can differentiate you read the mess- biography of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi you start from there then you read the biographies of the sahaba you read uh, about the prophets right that's that's where you start then you read all the legends that came from the time of muhammad sallam from his followers till now and then you read about the scholars who are alive and then you don't stop there you don't just read about them you go and meet them those who are alive and you see how they are how they are learning how they are carrying this knowledge and how they are practicing this knowledge subhanallah that is the real learning the learning is not from as the people of knowledge say what is in the books that's not knowledge knowledge is what's in your heart and what you learn from the mannerisms of the scholars 
so it's a big miss out muslims are missing out so much you know subhanallah anyhow uh, it's been a long uh, uh, session now i <laughs> today i apologize but uh, subhanallah i had to share all of this with you you know cuz there there is just i see it all over the place lot of misconceptions lot of and i don't see enough people speaking about it those who are practicing those who are up on the haq they are so few so few today people don't even know they exist and for example today was juma today was friday so i am just giving you an example a uh, simple example for you to relate the men can relate what i observe every friday there are so many pakistani indian bangladeshi you know like uh, you name it all nationalities it's a multicultural place dubai just like malaysia just like other places so the whole of gcc but especially the diversity in dubai is amazing even non muslims and people from all parts of the world russia anyhow when i what i see the muslims praying in juma now vast majority of them i know friday is like a working day in dubai in charge is different friday uh, saturday sunday is holiday at least in the government companies you know but in dubai is different and uh, they have now in saturday and sunday off or mostly sunday off for most companies so the amazing part that you know subhanallah now before juma what are people doing they come they do wudu and they sit and they start reciting the quran surah al kahf you know what is wrong with that see alhamdulillah actual sunna is to come early and of course get your fajr then from fajr onwards there are so many sunan so many sunnas you know that are forgotten that are missing so the it comes in one narration you get a, a reward almost equal to a hajj you know if you are coming to juma early, early you are doing ghusl you take uh, really you do really good ghusl you uh, and wudu obviously it is part of ghusl and you know you apply perfume itar i mean not not the alcoholic one itar incense yani and you do miswak properly siwak you clean your teeth properly allah loves it siwak it is the sunna and you come early you come by walking you come early to the masjid they are just so many sunnas but i'm just mentioning a few a couple of them okay Yes, I hope someone hears and benefits. So, and then you try to compete. You get in the first saf of the masjid near the imam, and you do your tahiyatul masjid. And then, if the azan has been called, then till the imam comes up, imam, uh, uh, yani raises to the rises to the minbar to do khutbah. You keep. praying nafil sunnah okay nawafil you keep praying two two nawafil two raka one after the other till the imam rises on the raises on the minbar now that is the actual sunnah that is what rasul and sahaba used to do that is the sunnah And what you actually see people doing, they they don't find the. You are supposed to recite Surah Al Kahf on. Uh, you can recite it well after Maghrib from Thursday onwards, because the Friday has started from Thursday itself after Maghrib. Or you can recite after Fajr, an uh, excellent time to recite Quran. The angels actually sit and listen to recitations, as comes in the Sahih Hadith. So. there is great ajr again even in sitting after the salah salatul fajr and every salah especially salatul fajr i'm talking about sitting there and doing a lot of zikr of allah and then uh, praying your 
uh, Ishraq and then yeah, great great ajr for that similarly so subhanallah you know you don't don't these people find time anywhere before and after Juma, they have to re recite Surah Al-Kahf just before uh, the khutbah. So it's strange. Like they are opposing the sunnah. They are doing something which is not part of the sunnah. I'm not saying they are doing something haram. It's not haram, but it is also not the sunnah. So in a way, people don't know what are the times when the dua is accepted when you are sick when you are traveling when you are when it's raining when you are the last third of the night when you are fasting all these times when you are in your sajda in your salah many people do special sajda after salah no that's wrong that's bid'ah so like you know what i'm saying this is, i just mentioned this as an example this is one of the things i want the brothers to be cautious of that learn what is the sunnah what are the timings what are the ins and outs when you are supposed to do what and when not you know do's and don'ts so learn that because every single day you are doing it it's a habit and you are getting ajr for it rather than you are just passing through life right as though I am just I am doing this you know I am just doing this this is what most people are doing in life today this is passing by does, does this benefit no what benefits is you you read one page a day of this book one page a day that's what I'm doing I'm reading with you guys just one page a day I mean on a Friday every Friday I'm just reading one page from this book so inshallah this will benefit because this is what I saw the scholars doing like Sheikh uh, Luhaydan he taught this book Aqidatul Wasati in two years on every uh, Sunday it was a Sunday I believe and uh, after Isha he would read this you know one chapter or, or one page I think one portion of a chapter on every every uh, Sunday and so he completed the whole book in two years and it was translated he would read in Arabic and uh, brother Abu Ismail Mustafa George used to translate live in English so like back then I didn't understand much Arabic and so that's why we were benefiting from the translations so alhamdulillah the point is that you have to start someday and you have to start from somewhere right but just wanting things and dreaming about things is not gonna help it's not gonna get you anywhere in life with anything all right I close here by whatever mistakes were in this are clearly from me and from shaitan and whatever if any good you found from this then that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanakallahu wa bihamdik ashadu la ilaha illa and astaghfiru wa tuwi assalamu alaikum wa